at this moment in time, I don't see how it's possible in any way to have an audience. Um, but we have done shows since May 16th until today from my home. Yeah. And thank you know, thankfully, the ratings have been great. People have been tuning in. The content has been strong. The conversation has been real and authentic. So I don't know. It's, it's, I, I just like with you in real estate, um, it's a balance of, well, your job is far more important than what I do. I mean, people are trying to find a home for their families, but it is a balance of knowing the need, which is finding a home for someone, but respecting where we are. Because yep. I think that's my home state of Texas right now. The cases are surging right. because I think that people did not respect where we are. You know, this is not that you can't beat this. You cannot beat this. So how um, how was it filming? I mean, how has it been filming at home? I know Don's done some oh. shots here and there and it's, you know, moving stuff off the counter and making sure the lighting's right. And how's um. it been? Should I tell them my midnight story where I had to drive to Don and Tim's home because my Wi-Fi wasn't working and I was in tears and I needed to feed in um, some videos that I'd filmed here at the house, but my Wi-Fi just was not cooperating. I got in the car and my son was asleep. My husband was here. I got in the car. It was, it was like 11 o'clock at night. It was super like dark and I'm like, Tim and Tim had to stand at the back of the house to social distance. He was way at the back. I <laughs> snuck in and didn't want to wake up the puppies. And and, and basically, I pirated off of their Wi-Fi in the middle of the night. That is yep. not I. That scenario was never in my plan when we presented this show and, and said, "Okay, let's do this show." It was bonkers. That was one of the strangest nights so far of all of this. <laughs> and that sort of um, technology—it's obviously become a huge, huge part of. Um, you know, our lives in, in the last, you know, in the last 20 years, yeah. but now in the last couple of months, we've realized like, I mean, who even knew what Zoom was now? Like Zoom is like- I've never heard of it. Right. And I felt old. I was like, is it because I'm almost 50? I, am I old? And then everyone else much younger, like, no, I hadn't heard. I knew of yeah. Blue Jeans, which I thought was a terrible name, but I knew of Blue Jeans, of course, um, FaceTime, but I never even heard of Zoom. In fact, we, um, the show we taped today, was about um, all of these scams and things. In one of them, people Zoom bombing. Like now they have passwords and they said they're gonna implement, you can't have a meeting without a certain password. Um, but people were Zoom bombing. They were jumping in on, you know, meetings. And this poor guy, um, he's a hedge fund guy. He had, a, you know, this big thing and put out the Zoom and all of these people came on and they were saying horrible things. He lost clients. Is yeah. bonkers. So that's one of the stories we did on the show. But yes, to your point, I never even heard of Zoom. I didn't know. Yeah. What so obviously, you know, we've um, with real estate, we've we've started virtual showings. We've given people 3D tours. So now you yeah. can, you know, basically walk around an entire apartment without ever going into it. Um, so it kind of reduces the the need to go to 20 yeah. different places. You kind of can limit what your you know what yeah. you really need to see. Yeah. Um, how about you guys? Are you doing like team meetings and how are yeah, you? Yeah, all of our team meetings are on Zoom. Uh, we start our first meeting of the day is usually around 7.30, 8 a.m. Um, to get the show out to the audience. Um, and hi, everybody watching right now. Um, we have a, a thing called LiveX. So they came into my home and transformed uh, one of the rooms into a studio. So I go down at eight, I hit a switch and I don't know how it happens, but some control room in California, I think, takes over. Um, which, of course, me and my husband laugh like, because we're like, is that microphone off? Are they recording? My, you know, because it's like I felt like I ceded some of my power of my privacy. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, I go down and I hit this button, but all of our executive producer, Candy Carter, um, we are all on the calls together. And uh, of course, this is my mom now verifying that she's picked up. I, 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 I cringe at showing this because this is, again, a part of my private life and I'm super protective of my mom. But my mom just got picked up by a driver who we know. I don't know if you can see this, but this, this is the bubble wrapped car my mom is in. <laughs> That's the world we live in right now. He's the whole car bubble wrap. And now I'm telling her I'm on an interview. Uh, 
That's hilarious. Um, I'm saying one minute. So yeah, that's that's kind of and talking about working from home. You know, this is exactly even though this is my mom on the call, working from home, having the studio here. My son is on the next floor up. So you know, if I were in the studio, I wouldn't hear him. You know, it's just like the dogs. You wouldn't hear them if you weren't home. But you're home, and so if you hear them or they want your attention, they get it. Whereas if you were out showing a home, um, you know, away without them, you wouldn't know. You're like, yeah. I don't know what they're doing. So the balance of tuning out you know, and focusing in on work when you're taping in the home has been impossible for me. I mean, I've legit pretended like, I'm like, I gotta go to the bathroom with break. And I run to see what my son is doing. So <laughs> I come, hey, I'm back. Sorry, guys, I had a bathroom break. But um, <laughs> we do every, all of our meetings on Zoom. The show interviews are Skype. Okay. And so live X contraption that they've sent that looks like something from uh, Transformers. Uh, it takes over and all those interviews are via Skype. Nice. Have you made any changes to your home during COVID or in light of having to work from home and all of that? Have I'm sorry, what would you say? I'm Have sorry. you made any changes like to your home or do you plan on making any changes or? No, I haven't made any yeah. changes. Not, not so far. I mean, you okay. know, like we, we, I have today, honestly, Tim is, that's why I said, okay, great. When you said Thursday, I was like, perfect. This is like the first day where I actually am absorbing myself really what's happened because it, we went from studio audience, you know, in studio audience, now fleeing with my family to try to figure out a location for us to try to do this show. Yep. While celebrating my son's birthday, my anniversary, <laughs> my birthday. So I like today is my first legit day where I, I probably didn't even know the, the color of our walls until today. I'm like, <laughs> Uh, my, uh, the bright spot in my life has been going out to the farm, your sister's market, getting some fresh fruit for my kid and getting some fresh flowers. That's been my escape from work. Nice. Great. I mean, I, I know it personally because someone is deep Looking working right now. Yeah. Every time I call him, he's like, I'm on a Zoom. I'm on this. I'm on an internet. Oh, it's crazy because you're now tethered. I mean, listen, being a journalist, it's a 24-7 lifestyle. I tell people that all yep. the time. You know, if you're going to do well at it, when I'm, I'm lecturing, I guess, um, the young journalists that I talk with, I'm like, this is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. But having these devices now that keep you tethered, I mean, it's taken having your phone. I, when I first met my husband, I, I, I slept with the phone in my bed um, because I was tethered to work. Now, knowing at any time people can Zoom conference you. I have people, producers, they'll send me a Zoom and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, you got to give me a heads up and let's figure this out. Because I was on one, I was so embarrassed. I was on a Zoom really late one night. It was probably almost midnight. We were looking at scripts and I was falling asleep and I was on my bed and I heard, I won't identify the person, the colleague's husband walked by and goes, is she in the bed? I was like, oh my God, he sees me. <laughs> but I, I was clothed, but yeah. I was like, like oh my gosh yes i was in the bed and i after that i started hitting the no video i was freaked out that my colleague's husband saw me in the bed and referenced and i heard him i was <laughs> shame of it all crazy um okay i want to shift gears obviously you guys are dealing with covid and uh black lives matter two major stories that are kind of existing at the same time um with the murders of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery and um, George Floyd, obviously there has been protests that we've all seen around the country. Um, and this conversa conversation, my question is, you know, what is your advice for young people um, to, you know, what can they do to keep this conversation going? Because um, we've, you know, we've seen it start. My husband walked into, uh, but keep going. Yeah, I'm not, this is real life here. I, I'm on the live thing. Can you call my mom? Okay, thank you. So sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so what's your advice for these, these young people who are really, you know, driving the movement right now and they're out protesting all over the country? What's your advice to them to keep it going? Oh, my God. I probably would ask them for advice because they are doing it all right. I mean, this is the first time that I can recall in my lifetime seeing a response like this. Um, you know, for me, the very first incident of this kind was the Rodney King uh, beating attack. Um, and um, 
we, you know, I just started out in the media. I had just left Temple University um, in Philadelphia. It just was this emotional roller coaster for me, and I felt so helpless. And so now I see these kids who are around that age, and they show no fear. They show no sense of helplessness. I don't think that they can get, there's nothing I can tell them because yeah. they are hitting it right down to, you know, the name Black Lives Matter is being created by three young Black women and sticking to their guns, no pun intended, um, not not changing the name. You know, there were even Black people who said, oh, this name is wrong. And, you know, you had whites, so all lives matter. And they said, you know what we mean, you yep. know. And yep. they stuck to it. And I think that they weren't um, going to bow down to this pressure because they knew their intention. And that's why now, six years later, corporations that would never six years ago have put Black Lives Matters on their social media pages, on their branding, are now doing that. So I don't think there's any advice I can give. I think it's incredible to watch, to also be a participant, because I'm not just a witness. I'm a Black woman in America, so I'm going to participate and be heard and yep. say the fact that Breonna Taylor's murder um, is no longer trending, makes me sick. Um, the pressure has to stay on. Um, it reminds me so much of Sandra Bland and how that just kind of went away in so many ways to what happened to her. So I think they're doing a remarkable job. We did a special on my show called Hear Us Now. And when I went into my team with the intention, we start every show with an intention. What is the intention? I said, I want only kids under 40. I want, because, you know, you think about the 25 years since Rodney King, you know, these young people under the age of 30 have watched, you know, person after person, black man after black man, black child, Tamir Rice, whose birthday was today, black women killed before their very eyes, whether it's the audio of Trayvon or the video clear as day of George Floyd. And that causes PTSD, trauma, anxiety. And I wanted them to be able to explain what that feels like. Um, so that kind of, um brings me to another question about like on your show when you come back in the fall um you know how how as a journalist and as a um tv show host like will you keep the conversation going i know you just said you yeah know, bringing no, I, I will, I will continue to um present the voice of the people that is my job while also making sure that my voice as a black woman in this business. I mean, listen, uh, Don Lemon is the only black host of a prime time show in cable news um, where a large portion of that audience are people of color. Um, you know, that's, that is um, not representative of the audience or of who we are. So for me to have this platform, um, as a woman, as a black woman, as a southerner. I mean, all of these boxes that I, I am in, that I proudly live in, uh, I'm gonna use each and every one of them. But listen, I, it's a blessing to have a platform and I'm not gonna waste it. I'm not gonna waste anyone's time. I'm not gonna waste our viewers. That's why that show was so important because if I have this spot, I want to be of value. Yep. I'm, love laughing and I love clothes and I love all those wonderful things and all this real estate, I love it all. Um, but I also want people to know when it's go time that I'm there too. I'm not there just for the fun. I'm there for life. And yep. we all sent that. Um, I think, you know, I think that the, the last couple of weeks have brought so much exposure to the topic. Um, but in my personal life, in um, conversations, I think people, not, not everyone fully still understands systemic racism. Mm -hmm. uh, what are like simple ways and things people can do to, you know, make changes in their lives? You know, that's a huge question because I, I, I can't tell someone what to do with their life yeah. or navigate. I had a conversation with a friend of our family recently who happens to be Jewish and he said something along the lines of, you know, I, I forget how he worded it, but I said, why do you need me to explain this to you? When I was in school, I remember the first images of the Holocaust that I saw. No one had to tell me 
what that meant. No one had to hand me a book and say to me, this is how you're supposed to feel yeah. when you see people treated that way. And then when I saw the images of human beings piled on top of each other, no one had to tell me, Tamron, that's wrong. This is how, I didn't have to go call a Jewish friend, right. like or call a friend. I knew, I knew as a kid that was wrong. So when people say, you know, help me understand, yes, there are new nuances of the black experience that I would pr happily explain, you yeah. know, of course. I mean, listen, I love if someone, you know, asked me about my childhood and the uniqueness of it, of having a dad in the military and also, you know, black, I, I'm, I'm game for that. Yeah. But if asking me a core question of how you are supposed to empathize with George Floyd, yeah. it's not, we're, we're done. I don't need to talk about it because yeah. no one took this Southern kid who, you know, did not have this worldly family. My grandfather was a sharecropper. My mom was a 19 year old single mom. No one had to take me and coach me on how to feel yeah. about what I saw in those pictures. Um, and so that's that's the advice that I would offer to anybody. Got it. Um, in terms of the, I know there's been a lot of calling for the removal of um, statues and Confederate statues around the country, um, even in New York City in front of the Museum of Natural History, the statue of Teddy Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. What do you say, should the statue come down? Did the Nazi statue stay up? Yeah. No, they didn't. No, no, no. <laughs> God, I mean, this, this notion, and they lost the war. I mean, right. listen, treason, lost the war. Mm -hmm. The whole concept of the, the glory of the Confederacy was a marketing plan. That's it. Yep. They, they committed treason against these United States. My father fought in the military for 30 years for a country that did not protect his rights, but he didn't commit treason against it. So yet we were gonna have statues and remembrances of people who wanted to destroy these United States of America. No one makes the case for why Germany took down every Nazi symbol. Why are we making a case for treasonous people who lost. They're the most glorified losers in history. I mean, right. come on. Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, the fireworks. Yeah, I don't even, I'm late to the party on that. Let me no. tell you, I just was saying to my husband, I don't know, it was a couple of months ago, I said, did you hear that? And I emailed people and I said, did you hear? I, I, I am not fully, I truly, and I feel horrible saying, I don't know exactly what's going on there. Okay. I know I was hearing it and I thought I was going crazy. And my husband was like, no, I was asleep, but he didn't hear it. I'm like, there are fireworks going off. Yeah. So what is that? Tell me what's happening. Well, I don't know if you have the app Citizen app. It's like the most fascinating thing. It's basically like a 911 caller thing. And you get all, everyone basically if there's a car crash or something, someone, a witness, well, it's like live, um, people live. will, yeah, basically people will live update, there's video content. And a lot of times that's where I see the messages, but you'll hear the fireworks, 9, 10, 11, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., um, you know, and they're just happening on all streets, all over the city in all five boroughs. Um, you know, I think it's a mixture of a sign of protest. I also think people have been cooped up oh. inside. Um, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely specific to this year, but, you know, there's been a mixture, mixed feedback in terms of should they be banned? Should people like... Well, fireworks are banned. They're illegal. Well, that's the question. But these are happening, like, on every street in the five boroughs. It's like... Listen, I... It's... And I only know about him because I have a dog who <laughs> runs across the apartment if we hear him, so... I, yeah, well, we used to have a thunder jacket for May Love when they have the fireworks. Yeah. I, I, I don't know exactly, so I don't feel comfortable, you know, speaking on it. I've Got heard it. and okay. I've seen tweets and things on it. I am, 
I'm not a big conspirator. Well, my friends would say I am. I'm really because I was all in any any kind of conspiracy show. Even yeah. uh, I can't say that I don't fall into the lane, but I. Okay. All right. I want to uh, end this on a fun game that I came up with um, at the expense of someone we both love. Okay. So I'm going to give you two op four questions, two options, and you can choose the answer. Four questions, two. Okay, got it. Right, I'm going to show you a graphic. Oh, John, I almost said, oh, crap. Okay. So if Don ever needed an escape from being a primetime anchor, we know he loves boating and driving. So would you want him to be a captain of a yacht <laughs> or a New York City taxi driver? Yeah. Yacht. My friend is too fly. He needs to be on the yacht. He needs to be looking like Captain Steubing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you've had his mom's cooking before and yes. at a holiday party at our house. So would you choose her gumbo or her holiday cakes? A gumbo. Because, okay. listen, no, gumbo is a gift. Yes, it's, it is. It's, your hands are blessed from up above if you can do a good gumbo. And that gumbo is fire. Nice. <laughs> um, Don is always shaving his head, growing out his hair, and trying to figure out what his new hairstyle is. So if yep. you had to choose, would you give him a mohawk or the dreads? Why can't cornrows be an option? I <laughs> <love cornrows. laughs> Um. Ooh. He looks like, ooh. Okay, I'm gonna go. Oh, no, no, I'm gonna have to go with the dreads. Okay, I'm dreads, dready Don, <laughs> dready Don. <laughs> and Don is always coming up with a new outfit for special events. Yes, so he does. Was your favorite the Bermuda shorts and matching knee socks, Ooh. or the infamous cape. cape? The cape. I texted him when I saw the cape. I texted him that night when I saw the cape. <laughs> cape. I'm Team Cape. Very nice. Um, so one last question before we go. I know you have to go. Um, what is, when everything opens up in your neighborhood, what are you most looking forward to getting out there and doing? Oh, you know what? I love being outside. I love just, I love Central Park. And I, my son, as I said, turned a year old. So we hadn't had a chance to really just stroll through Central Park and do nothing. I really as long as Amy Cooper is not there, <laughs> I would like to stroll <laughs> through the park uh, with my son. And just, it's, it's free, it's beautiful, and have that moment. Because I, like I said, I grew up in a rural area, and having a backyard and having that freedom is something that I value and I miss in so many ways. But New York and Central Park give you that. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to just... Yep. A coffee in hand, walking with my two booze, and being in Central Park. Nice. Well, I hope we get to do it soon. 